Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting video tutorial today. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how can you call an Apex method from the integration processor that is a part of Omni Studio. So if you don't know about Omni Studio, I'm going to create another video. But this video is for people who are stuck with or who are working on Omni Studio integration processor and who wants to call the Apex class. So let's get started. All right, so let's create our integration procedure and then we'll create our Apex class and I'm going to show you guys this is very simple and easy to work on. So let's create our first integration procedure here and uh, I'm just going to give uh, test IP v2 for now. Uh, let's give the type and subtype as well and let's click on save. Now once your IP is created, we can add this uh, action which is a remote action. And of course, I'm going to add a response here as well. Now in this remote action, we have something called remote class and remote method. Now this remote class is nothing but your Apex class and this remote method is nothing but your Apex method. So for now, let's create our Apex, Apex class here. So I'm just going to give a remote uh, class one for now. I have already created remote class there. So you can see we have a remote class here. I'm just going to change this to global instead public and uh, we also need to use interface now here i have already you know used this so i'm just going to copy this another thing that i want to highlight that all the coding that i'm doing in every single tutorial here i'm going to put all these codes on uh, github so you don't have to worry about you know writing this code by yourself so i'm just gonna uh, you know uh, put a link in the description so you can copy paste all the code from there for example this um, you know this basic code that you have to write so you don't have to write this basic code actually uh, now another thing that I want to highlight here is that you need to check the prefix here for your manage package so how to check that so first of all you have to go into the setup because your velocity open interface will not work uh, if your package a prefix is incorrect here so just go to the setup here and go to this package here install package now in this install package you can see i have this velocity uh, you know cmt and uh, velocity underscore cmt is the prefix here so this is the prefix that you have to use now for omni studio also if you if you are using the uh, sandbox which is basically given by you can actually create a sandbox through trailhead as well for omni studio that is a different thing so i'm gonna make another video for that but i believe in most of the projects you have this uh, package basically which is basically velocity underscore cmt with prefix uh, for insurance and some health cloud related i believe this velocity underscore ins that is one prefix but yeah you can always check in this install packages so make sure your package prefix is correct here now again we have to use a, uh, a method basically which is uh, which is invoke method so i'm just gonna copy paste again you can just copy paste this this is a simple code that you have to create i'm just gonna comment this for now so this is the only apex code basically that you need ever to you know uh to call your apex class uh to call your apex method the only thing that you need so if i save this this is gonna save it's gonna get saved so i just need to copy this remote class here and let's put this into remote uh class and uh i can put just method name any any name here let's say uh, you know generate or any method name as per your business logic so if i hit this execute button this met invoke method will get executed let's say i put this something called system.debug here inside invoke method so now uh, this invoke method is from this velocity interface let me see if i can open this i believe i can open this so if you see uh, in this interface there is this invoke method and it contains this param one two three and uh, uh, so 0 1 2 3 so this first parameter is nothing but your test uh, method your method name okay so your remote method is nothing but your first parameter here the second parameter is nothing but your input and third is output and the fourth one is options basically so that's what i have written here the method name input output and options so you can find this code on my github i'm gonna put the link in the description below so you just need to you now copy paste this change your class name and uh, you know what i'm gonna make a tool on this as well uh, because you will need to uh, uh, work with some inputs as well so on that part another video is coming i might even make one extension as well so uh, for now here we have our first method so when i hit this 
IP. Okay, when I hit this IP, this remote action element will get called, and once this is once this gets called, this will go inside this invoke method. Now in this invoke method, whatever we do, that will happen. So I can create ten different methods. I can call all these ten different methods from this invoke method itself. Okay, so reaching here is the big part. That's what we're gonna do here. Okay, so I have added this system debug statement just to show you guys. We have uh, whenever you call your IP, you will find some logs here as well. Okay, so let me call my IP here. This is the test IP, and I hope everything is correct here. So if I execute this, nothing is gonna happen, of course. But if you see, there is this remote action for remote action one here. You will find this error code invoke 200. Invoke 200. That means that. This there is no issue with this apex code. It's working perfectly fine. So if I go into this logs here, I hope the logs are here. So this is the VF remoting log, and I can just open this raw log. And inside this raw log, you can find this debug statement invoke uh, inside invoke method, which is on line number five. So on line number five, I have this debug statement. So that's it, guys. This is how you can actually call uh, the apex code through your integration processor now. The advanced part or the main part let's say you want to generate some random string or your business logic you want to call another method okay so let's create a public static uh, void method here uh, i'm just gonna give the name as generate okay and uh, it will it will basically have these two parameters it will have input and output that we are going to you know send uh, through our apex code to the ip back okay now here what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna create one integer let's say random number which is basically will have a integer dot value of it will be math dot random multiplied by let's say let's give you know a number of zeros so we will have a lot of value so now whatever the math random will be value will be there i have, i want to you know show this value in the output and also you know what i'm gonna just do one thing i'm gonna see what i get in input as well so i will just print this input for now system.debug and i'll put this input okay and uh, for the output i this is just a map so you can just simply use output dot put and uh, let's say random number this will be the key and the value will be this random now variable so whatever the random number that is created that will be stored in this integer and that integer i'm just going to show in my output through this output dot put method now i just need to call this generate method here and at the same time i need to pass this input and output which i already am passing into this invoke method so i'm gonna go back again into this guys so don't worry about this so here let's uh, run this ip and we should be getting some something in this remote action okay so you know for name change i'm just gonna change this to remote uh, or apex method here and this will be just the response also i will do one more thing i'll just uh, put this add show only additional output so here in this additional output i'm just gonna add a key value pair which is basically result and uh, here let's add as uh, apex method okay now whatever the apex class is basically going to show us that we'll see in the response here now in this uh the preview here if i execute this you can see random number is basically showing this random number is nothing but the output that i'm passing i can pass basically anything here let's say i pass uh, uh test here and i'll pass one two three four or let's say rohit or i'll just pass name for now here i can pass anything anything i can pass basically uh let's say I pa i'm passing uh i'm creating another let's say i've created date let's say dt is equals to system dot now i'll do one more thing actually instead of this i'm gonna create a string here which is basically uh date now and i'm gonna make it string dot value of and i'm going to pass it here okay and this date now i'm just gonna pass here as a time you know what time now or you can give any any variable okay it's not a big deal so let me just save this real quick i hope this gets saved without any errors 
and uh, variable as I exist date now yeah of course I need to call this as time now here and once I save this I should be getting some more data so if you see name time it is giving basically time and date it's up to you guys you can pass anything okay so don't worry about this um, so this time basically I just created this system dot now I'm passing it as a string here then I have this uh, name which I just hard coded here again the random number I have created this I'm passing so I will go back to the basics again so what we are doing here is we have this apex method okay apex method uh, is basically remote action and in this uh, apex method remote action element I have this remote class uh, uh, so here I'm passing this remote class whatever the remote class I have created and I'm passing this method as generate here okay now once I do this I have uh, uh, once I once I pass the correct apex class here and the method it is going to go inside this invoke method now in this invoke method I'm already calling this generate method uh, so in this generate method I have just done some basic logic you can write circles you can write basically anything any business logic and then what I'm doing is I'm basically passing this all the output that I want through this uh, so basically I'm passing all the generated output that I want to pass in this output map at the same time I can take the input as well so I forgot to mention that about input so for input you have to let's say I am I have created one string called uh, let's say uh, name here okay and uh, for input I need to write something called input dot gate so dot gate is a method from a map so through map you can actually uh, you know retrieve any value so input dot gate I'll just write here I'll just write here as a name for now now I am not actually passing any input here so what I'm gonna do is uh, I am just gonna click on this send additional input here and uh, I'm gonna create this node and in this node let's say I have something called uh, name so this is um, this is what I'm gonna take from the request itself so let's create this request as well so here I'm gonna pass name as uh, let's say Rohit for now so this is what uh, I want to make this something like this yeah and this is what I'm going to remove for now so here I just want to you know see what is the name that I'm passing or you know what I can I can actually send this name from input to output again okay so let's save this again now there is one issue that you'll face here now you can see it is coming illegal assignment from object to string okay so this input if you see this input map this is string versus object so what are the value that you are going to get will be of object so I have to basically you know either you can type cast it or you can use this string dot value of okay this method you can use so I'm going to use this string dot value of method okay so this method you can always use string dot value of so what are the so the main importance here is that you should have a correct data type okay so if you have a correct data type then it's really you know useful so I have this uh, name here so let's say I'm passing this name and it should let's say I pass here Roy the one two three for example and if I execute this okay it should give me this name again node which is basically Roy one two three okay so I can pass anything here okay if I pass just any random text it should give me so all this data that uh, I want I can get from input okay from my request like uh, from this input dot gate method but of course you have to typecast it okay this is one thing that I wanted to highlight now let's talk about some best practices that you should be using so you must have uh, you know observed I haven't used any try catch block here so very first thing that I'm gonna use actually before even try catch block is to check if my method if I'm calling the correct method so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add one simple if condition here okay if method name is equals to what are the method around let's say I'm calling this generate method here so I'm going to basically add this one specific condition if it is a generate only then it will basically uh, you know it will be it, it will call only generate method otherwise it will not do anything so I'm just gonna save this so now whenever I call it is going to basically let's say if I type any uh, here let's say test or any random method okay it's not going to give me any output here now so let me just hit this execute button again so if you see I did not get any output because I'm not calling this generate method but if I just copy this generate method again here if I paste this as a remote method 
because this is again a parameter you can say option as well so if i hit this execute you can see i'm getting the data now the best practice i'll recommend here is the try catch block you can use the try and catch block here as well so i'm putting this try block then we have cast exception and you can just print your exception here again okay what are exceptions that you have that you can print e dot uh, there is something called get message this method i want to create another video on uh, how to handle exceptions and how to actually catch the exceptions how can store exceptions ag again so all these details i'm gonna you know i, I want to create some videos so uh, i will recommend you guys to work to create this try catch block whenever you are calling any methods here and just you know uh, this is again better to have the, all the data from your uh, remote action okay so whenever if your code breaks you will have at least some data there so this is all i wanted to share guys i hope you enjoyed and like this uh, video i was a little bit faster here but uh, i will be you know uh, i'll be working on this and uh, i have plenty of ideas and plenty of uh, tutorials to cover in the upcoming days i was um, pretty occupied in the last couple of weeks but in the upcoming weeks i'll be putting a lot of content so if you haven't subscribed or liked this video i it really helps me a lot if you like and subscribe so thank you so much for watching the video and i'll see you in the next one